Hello, grade 11. Uh, welcome to 1.4, Proving Conjectures Using Deductive Reasoning. So first of all, we're going to look here. It says, prove mathematical statements using a logical argument. We're going to explore, how can the conjecture all teens like music be supported inductively? So inductively means you look at data, you see patterns, and you make a conjecture. So all teens like music, how could you support that? And then finally, how could you prove it? The conjecture all teens like music can be supported inductively by collecting more evidence. A questionnaire or an online survey could be tools to gather the evidence. The conjecture cannot be proved because it's impossible to ask all teens. However, the conjecture can be refuted with just one counterexample, a student who dislikes music. So we can support it inductively. We can find more and more evidence that says, yeah, teens like music, but we can't prove it unless we asked every single teenager if they liked music. And we can, in fact, disprove this conjecture by finding one person, one teenaged person, who does not like music. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do an example we looked at before, and we're going to use deductive reasoning to generalize a conjecture. Um, one second. First of all, what is the definition of deductive reasoning? We looked at this before. Deductive reasoning is when you draw a specific conclusion through logical reasoning by starting with general assumptions that are known to be valid. So we start with an assumption. We use logic, we, you, we use strong mathematical operations or things that are logical to come to a conclusion. So we start with something we know, we use things we're allowed to do, mathematical calculations and logic, and we come to a new, uh, a new specific conclusion. Okay. So here we have Stefan's conjecture that the difference between consecutive perfect squares is always an odd number. Um, determine the general case to show this. So, we say that the difference between consecutive perfect squares is always an odd number. Stefan's conjecture has worked for consecutive perfect squares with sides of 1 to 7. So what he did is he tried a sample using greater squares, 26 squared and 25 squared. The difference of these two sets of, the difference is the two sets of 25, 25 and 25, plus 1. So we saw that was also odd. So we've just gathered more inductive evidence that, yeah, in every single example, it seems to be that the difference is an odd number. But now we're going to let, we're going to do a general case, determine the general case to prove. That's how we prove. Um, let x be any natural number. Let d be the difference between consecutive perfect squares. Since the conjecture has been supported with specific examples, I decided to express the conjecture in a general. I chose x to be the length of the smaller sides, smaller squares sides, and the larger square would be x plus y. I expanded and simplified my expression. Since x represents any natural number, 2x is an even number, and 2x plus 1 is an odd. So what they did is they foiled or expanded x plus 1 and got x squared plus x plus x plus 1 minus x squared. So they combine those x's together. Finally, they notice that those x squared uh, cancel one another out. And we're left with 2x plus 1. Um, 2 times a number, any number, 2 times anything is an even number. So an even number, that what comes after every even number? What comes after 2, 4, 6, 8? Well, 3, 5, 7, 9, which are odd numbers. Um, so Stefan's conjecture that the difference of consecutive perfect squares is always not a number has been proved for natural numbers. Natural numbers are counting numbers. So what they're saying is this doesn't work. This maybe doesn't work for fractions or other silly numbers. Okay. Now we're going to look at using deductive reasoning to make a valid conclusion. So we have that all dogs are mammals. All mammals are vertebrates, and Shaggy is a dog. So I like to use a Venn diagram here. So we have dogs. Every single dog is also a mammal. The reason the mammal circle is bigger than dogs is there's things, there's animals and organisms included in mammals that 
are not dogs. We could have people. We could have giraffes. All of these things that are also included in mammals. And it says that all mammals are vertebrates. Well, guess what? There's things included in vertebrae that aren't mammals. There's fish. There's birds. All of those things that are not mammals that are also vertebrates. So now what we're saying is we have shaggy. The shaggy right here. Now shaggy is a dog. So shaggy could be put right in here. So knowing that Shaggy is a dog, what else can we say about him? We're using deductive reasoning. We're saying because he's a dog, well, guess what? He's also a mammal because he's included in that, and he's also a vertebrae. So that's the conclusion that we could make. Um, now we're going to use deductive reasoning to prove a geometric conjecture. We're going to do some geometry. Prove that when given two straight lines, when two straight lines intersect, that the vertically opposite angles are equal. We're going to use the two column proof to prove that angle AED and CEB are equal. Two column proof is right here. A presentation of a logical argument involving deductive reasoning. So we're going to start with an assumption known to be true. We're going to do logical or mathematical operations to it and come to our conclusion. Uh, in which the statements of the argument are written in one column. So we're going to have statements. And the justifications are written in another columns. Sometimes instead of justifications, justifications, there we go, um, are also called reasoning. That's fine. Just vocab. Okay. So we're trying to prove that AED... AED, this one right here, and CEB are equal. In other words, that vertically opposite angles are equal. Well, first of all, I notice that these are straight lines. So that means that angle AED plus angle AEC are going to equal 180 degrees. And the reason I know that is because they form a straight line. Another word for that is that they are supplementary. Sorry, my smart bard is very slow today. They are supplementary. Okay. But I also know that angle AEC plus angle CEB are equal to 180 degrees. So I said that all of these angles here add up to 180, and all of those angles there add up to 180. So again, that's due to supplementary. Okay. Now, what am I trying to show? I'm trying to show that AED and CEB are the same. So I'm going to take each of these formulas, each of these ex uh, equalities, equations, so that's what I'm looking for, and we're going to solve for AED in this one, and then solve for CEB in the second one. So the first one, if we, go, we know that AED is equal to subtracting AEC from both sides. Okay, and we just did subtraction. Which is a sound mathematical operation, subtraction. Okay, and we know now we're going to solve this equation here for AEC. Sorry, for CEB rather. CEB. So we want to get this by itself. We're going to have to subtract this guy from both sides. Equals 180 minus angle AEC. Again, that was just subtraction. Okay, and we notice that AED and CEB are both equal to the same thing. 
And that's called, when that happens, that's called the transitive property. And I have, I don't have the transitive property there. Sorry. So now we can say that angle AED is equal to angle CEB, and that is by the transitive property. Transitive property. Sorry, my smart board is being awful. Property. Okay, what the transitive property says, so that's the end of that proof. We use deductive reasoning to prove that those angles, those vertically opposite angles are equal. What uh, transitive uh, property says that if A equals B and C equals B, well then guess what? A equals C as well. That's called the transitive property, and we use that quite a bit in proof. Next, um, just some generalizations, some, uh, some things you can generally, generally say. This would be something very important to have in notes and something that I would even allow you to bring into an exam. So if we wanted to just say a number, we're, we could use the letter N. We could use anything. Let X be a number. Let P be a number. Okay, an even number, what's important is that it's 2 times a number, 2n, 2k, 2 something else. An odd number, and we saw this before, is 2n plus 1. So an even number plus one more. We could also say it's 2n minus 1. That would also work. AB is a two-digit number. It can also be written as 10a plus b. A uh, three-digit number can be written as ABC, can, um, and that can also be written as 100A plus 10B plus C. So an example of that is 946 is a three-digit number, and that can be written as 9, oops, 100 times 9. I'll use the same format, format 100 times 9 plus 10 times 4 plus 6. That's called expanded form. So we're going to use these generalizations throughout the proofs, and in the assignment questions, you're going to do that as well. Um, so here's something we're going to prove. The following rule can be used to determine whether a number is divisible by 3. You add the digits and determine if the sum is divisible by 3. If the sum is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. Use deductive reasoning to prove that the divisibility rule for 3 is valid for two-digit numbers. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example. Um, the number 33 is divisible by 3 if, because if the sum of these numbers is divisible by 3, if 3 plus 3 is 6, since that is divisible by 3, then 33 is divisible by 3. That's what this is saying. Okay, so I have shown an example. That is inductive reasoning. I've looked at this pattern and I've said, hey, that works. But now I'm going to prove that in general. And I'm going to do a two-column proof because we never get enough practice of two-column proofs. So we have statements and we have justification or reasoning. Seems like there's one half of my smart board that's a little slow. Justification. There we go. So um, our statement is going to be, let AB be a two-digit number. Okay, our justification is this is just our assumption. We're starting with an assumption we know to be true. Yeah, that's how we can write a two-digit number. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to write A, B as 10 A's plus B. Okay, so this is just called expanded form. Expanded form. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this form. So instead of writing 10a plus b, I'm going to write 9 plus 1, which is the same as 10, times a plus b. 
And I could have written 6 plus 4. I could have written 5 plus 5. But I chose 9 for a very special reason, and hopefully that becomes clear in a second. This can further be expanded. Expanded to be 9a plus a plus b. And I'm going to just put some brackets here to, so we can look at this. So I said, um, prove that the divisibility rule is valid. And that rule is add the digits and determine if the sum is divisible by 3. If the sum is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. So what I'm saying, when I, when I look at this, I say, well, AB can be divisible by 3 if and only if this entire number is divisible by 3. Well, guess what? This number can only be divisible by 3. In other words, remember this was the expanded version of AB. If this, is, this part right here is divisible by 3, so it can only, the entire number can only be divisible by 3 if A plus B is divisible by 3. I'll write that out for you. AB is divisible by 3 by 3 only when only when both 9a and a plus b are divisible I have a slow spot on my smart board right there. Are divisible by 3. And we have proved that the number rule works. So just a little side note. If I have the number 9 plus 6, 9 plus 6 is 15. This is only divisible by 3 if that's divisible by 3 and that's divisible by 3. In other words, I could factor out a 3. So I have 3 times 3 plus 2, or 3 times 5. I factored a 3 out of here and a 3 out of there. That's what this step was up here, just in a more general form. Okay. Finally, the things we need to know. Deductive reasoning involves starting with general assumptions that are known to be true and through logical reasoning arriving at a specific or conclusion. You need to know that conjecture has been proved only when it, is, it is, has been shown to be true for every possible case. Or an example, this is accomplished by creating a proof that involves general cases. That's why we use these generalizations. They're not real. They're not specific examples, they are in general. Okay? When you apply the principles of deductive reasoning correctly, you can be sure that the conclusion you draw is valid. The transitive property, property, this is what I said before, is often useful in deductive reasoning. It can be stated as follows. Things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. For the example I gave, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals B super important and a mistake that students like to make. A demonstration using an example is not a proof. So you can give me all the examples you want. You could give me 4,500 examples. That does not prove anything. Your assignment, and this is a tough assignment, and I suggest doing these all, checking them over, asking me for help if you need. Uh, your assignment for 1.4 is questions 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 17. Good luck.